Hey everybody, Ethan here from Extreme RC 4x4 and I just wanted to do an update on my trail finder. As you can see, there is a lot going on and um, I would like to mention that I'm going to be getting a lot of these parts up on the website pretty quickly here. Uh, just as soon as I get another order for a set of these bumpers, I'll have them up there. And then this rack is custom fabricated for a specific customer. I'll talk about that a little bit later but anyways guys that'll be up on the website a little bit later but for now I just want to talk about uh, all this stuff and what's kind of been going on with the trail finder because a lot has changed as you can see so first up I did get new tires for Christmas these are 1.55 rock stompers uh, compared to the stock mud thrashers I actually really like uh, the performance on these mud thrasher tires it's not bad as long as you don't get mud caked up inside of here I just have these tires stretched over these Vitero 1.9 uh, wheels they're not beadlocks I'm probably gonna end up picking up some beadlocks because I don't want to glue them on here and I'm thinking I'll probably just stick with the RC four-wheel drive wagon wheels I like these and I think the design looks really good on these Toyota bodies but first up, up front here, this is a uh, winch bumper, you could say, but the winch is not inside of this bumper like most winch bumpers would have it. All it is is my fair lead bolted on there. I got the design from the CC hand bumper available on RC Four Wheel Drive's website. And although I really like those bumpers, I could never really afford to buy one of those because the price point is kind of high but I can see why there's a ton of work that goes into them. But basically this is constructed from quarter inch um, aluminum rod and eighth inch plate. This right here, this flat piece is eighth inch plate and I just cut on the bandsaw to fit in here correctly. But I started out by bending this first uh, two piece right here and then I filled in with this aluminum plate and then these two eighth inch plates right here as you can see they bolt right up to the frame these were machined out and i basically use these as a template for getting this lower bar in so as you can see right here it comes out in front of the leaf spring shackle Let's see if i can get that up for you guys so right back here and I would like to show you that the shocks actually bottom out for the leaf spring shackles hit that bumper. So as you can see, just slightly enough room, but they are threaded. So you don't have to use a nut on the inside of this. So this just screws in like a regular bumper. And like I said, it does use my custom winch that I have inside of there. And it just butts basically right up to this. So no real issues with that. Um, you can mount a small winch in here. I have some, yeah, racing winches. These would fit inside of there on that plate. And it'd probably look pretty sweet being able to see the whole winch. But I had a couple comments about maybe plating it in. But I didn't want it to end up looking like um, the honcho bumpers. Like you see how, because that's kind of what this would look like is a honcho bumper. But honestly, I kind of like the the pass through kind of being able to see that and it's been a really good bumper for me it does stick out as about about as far as the other one however the point where it sticks out is much higher up than the last winch bumper i had on here where it was lower so that was my ultimate goal with this bumper is just getting better clearance and sticking with this kind of tubular bumper design i'm really starting to fall in love with the tube bumpers and just how they look on these Toyotas but nothing's really changed under here um, I'm considering doing a motor drop but if I do do it I'm gonna CNC machine all of the parts to make it happen because I don't want to cut up this frame it's just I don't want to make that kind of commitment to a motor drop You can also see um, I put the 
bed back on. I don't have the flat bed on it anymore because um, it was just off just enough. All the stuff wasn't quite correct. So I might give building another one a shot again. I really like how the flat bed looks on here, but I had to put the bed back on anyways to build a roll bar and build this. So I went ahead and made this rear bumper so that I would have something for the competitions. This kind of started from the fact that I broke the plastic rear bumper mount that your bumper normally, the posts slide into. I broke that and I did not have any other bumper mounts that would go in there. And the RC4 drive bumpers only mount through there, at least the ones that I have. So basically uh, you can see, I guess I'll take this back off. This is just screwed on to the outside. Mine is the width of this hitch. Um, you can see the hitch bolts onto the outside and then my bumper bolts further on the outside. But um, the production models of these bumpers work with up to a one inch bob in the bed. So if you cut an inch out of the back of your bed, you can push the bumper back in. They slide on rails, so that's pretty neat. Just a simple double tube bar design I didn't want to do the whole wrap around the bed one like the factory although that is cool um, I just found it rubbed my plasti dip off so I just stuck with this simple double two bar I didn't think I really needed the protection back here but um, the bottom bar is straight as you can see and then on the top bar it's just barely tapered in and that way you know you get good clearance back here but it also comes out a little bit and i made sure that it sat low enough that you'd still be able to open your tailgate in real life as you can see the hinges are just above this bumper and they just barely hang below i also put some small uh, d-ring shackle mounts on the bottom and as you guys know i like these things to be flopping around so i oversized the holes a little bit so that nothing's tight and that's really sweet touch there's also d-ring mounts on the front bumper but i don't have any more d-rings at the moment i'll probably have to pick some up though all right now i'm sure a lot of you are eyeballing this uh adventure rack but basically this is not exactly done yet i'm probably going to put a mesh right here and up here for the roof rack area and I need to put some more of these small supports in here to brace this this is also going to be getting some Traxxas max tracks for the sand ladders they have and the the roto packs that they have or you know just the regular gas cans that are on the TRX4 so I'm going to be machining some plates to mount all that stuff too this is constructed from 3 16 inch rod and it's all hand bent by me. The only thing is I machine these two base plates where you'll where it's mounted for the customer. These are taps, so all you have to do is drill the holes and screw it in. But this has been a really awesome project. He wanted holes back here, so I put in these flat cross members. Um, he's going to mount possibly a rooftop tent right there. And the whole kind of this second top bar came into play because I didn't want this bar to be poorly supported because this whole front hoop is separate from these two side pieces. So just relying on those two joints is probably not going to be the strongest thing, especially in a rollover. So by adding this top bar, it's bracing this front hoop into these back rails here. So that's gonna add a lot of strength, especially once I put the second set of these little guys right back in here. But it's just a really awesome looking rack. I kinda wish it was my own, but then again, I'm gonna build a flatbed for this someday that's gonna be really awesome. So this is kinda just what I've been working on with the trail finders. I'm hoping to add all this stuff to the website, like I said, pretty quickly here. But definitely let me know your thoughts on this adventure rack. I really like it and my dad does too but other than that there's not much going on with the trail finder 
hopefully we'll pick up some new wheels, maybe get the motor drop done. And I also got an interior for this. So once we get the interior in, it'll be legal for class one in my area. I don't know if I'm gonna really run this in the competition series or if I'm just gonna run my team associated CR12 because that's also legal and I have an interior for that. But let me know what you guys think about the trail finder. It's gone through about a million stages of life and I think it's finally time to peel the plasti dip off and repaint it because I got some more plasti dip for it. Some people said, you know, just cover the the torn spots with, you know, a little orange paint, make it look like rust, but the problem is the plasti dip it doesn't really tear clean. It kind of leaves like a little fuzz behind like you can see here. So, I think possibly just redoing the whole thing will be the best option. I mean, it does have that really awesome patina on it from, you know, getting grease all over it and whatnot. This is all just like natural stuff that's happened working on it. By the way, I never intentionally put grease on it. It's just every time you pick this up, you get grease on your hands, then you touch something else and there's grease all over it. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.